grand. Well, we're in the home of, I'm just for the sake of the, the future viewers, in the home of Martin and Kathleen uh, MacDonald. And um, Martin, you, you actually came to Summerhill in 1953. 53, I arrived at, uh, at your auntie's, Gussie's. On the bus? On the bus at 7 o'clock in the evening in November. Wow. And I met him in January. Of the same, of the following year. And we got married in October. Wow. Wow. Of 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 fifty four. Sixty years ago. Oh, yeah. Wow. But I remember when I arrived in Summerhill that year. At your aunties. There's no uh, they hadn't the electricity. There's no electricity, and I remember I had my bike with me. I brought my bike, and I asked where was the, you know, because I asked where was the Reverend Father, you know, to mm -hmm. see that. Hired you? Hired me. And uh, so I made my way. I never forget it. I had no lamp. What was a dark hour night? And I made me my way eventually up to uh, the boy. Up the boy. And into Father Moore's. I'm sure he wasn't expecting me at all. He thought I'd be. Uh, I told him I was, I was coming, but he didn't expect me that soon. So. Um, Oh, he was flabbergasted, or whatever way Father Moore had ever been, you'd never know. He had his housekeeper that time, and she was the wearing the pants, I'd say. <laughs> you know, which was the common thing at the time, for all housekeepers to be in charge of everything nearly. Was that Mrs. Cooney? Cooney. <laughs> Do you remember? I don't, but I... I, I... Heard stories, yeah. So, oh, I, he brought me, he uh, told me to give me some kind of directions anyhow, and I got out of this road again. And it's Mrs. Doors was the house up near uh, Nagnus. That you were going to stay in? That, yeah, Diggs. That he had uh, arranged for me. Right. I'll never forget it. So I eventually reached it. And I, I was up next morning and off to work. <laughs> and who was working, who was doing so but Myra? Ah, Myra Rance. Myra Rance. Myra Myra. In one sense, she wasn't, she couldn't have been satisfied because it wasn't easy to get a substitute in those days. But yeah, she was a nice person, very nice person. So I arrived in and Myra was there and I said, I'm the new. And I couldn't believe I had arrived so quickly. You know. I was only at the time now getting used to it. And that was the old school. Mm. The old school in Cool was... At the church. Right. It's the building there at the end of the, the church. Hot. The church hall now, is it? What they call the church hall. Mm. And, uh, but it was, oh, what a state it was in. The door was half down. And the floor, <laughs> the floor of the room was completely, there was holes in it. And the mice were coming up and <laughs> taking their lunches. Mm. Sorry, Kathleen. Can I just you were you were already in Summerhill. Where where was your home? I was down oh. in Branagstown. Oh, right, Branagstown. Yeah. And sorry, what was your maiden name? Kathleen Gamer. Gamer, right. Pat Gamer was right. my father. Right. That's him there. Ah, oh, right, right. 
Because her mother was dead. Her uh, mother was dead at that yeah, time. Yeah. Right. And but you were both very young, if I can ask that question yeah. at that time. I was 19 well, she when was, I got married. She was being reared by uh, Anuses in Brandon. Right. Which was a common thing that time. That, you know, where her mother died young. Of course. Um, and Anuses weren't related to you, they were neighbours, were they? They were just... No. Well, they were known for... Uh, you know, for raising children that had um, whose no. mothers died suddenly, yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. So, her father, you know, of course, was living on his own up in. What's the name of that place? Boys' Mill? No. No. The father moved up in. Uh, what did he Oh, see, it's on the right line. It's a right line, yeah. It's on the road to Enfield, more or less. Right. right. Mm. Can I bring you back to where you came from? We know you arrived in November '53, but where did you come from? Oh, me. I came from. Mm. Uh, I came from Mayo. I was in Mayo at the time. I was working in Castlebar. And that's your home? That's your... Uh, well, Mayo was... I was also uh, reared by uncles and aunts. And my mother died when I was young too. Right. Mm. And uh, <coughs> I... Uh, I was staying living with my aunt then for years. And <coughs> I had a job in Mayo, and I never forget it. Not even. Oh, it was in a backward place now, part of Mayo, Berlin, actually. And that was teaching, though you were teaching. Yeah. Was there. It was one of the first jobs I had. I started off teaching in Dublin, and I left Dublin, which probably would have been the last thing I should have done in those days, but I didn't know at the time. <coughs> Anyhow, I was teaching down there near Castle Bar, Bob was the name of it. And, uh, I suddenly got a dislike for the countryside again. I got a dislike for the hard gold because I was cycling from Born to straight, which was about 20 miles. Oh. Yeah, and me all that time was on hills. <laughs> She's a bit. It's a kid, you. It's like the psyche. So I said I'd get out of here again. And the moment I got a chance, that time it was easy enough for us to get jobs. Um, all you had to do was to look at the paper and you could see a job, you know. Right. <clears throat> but you probably would have to travel. And you could see. I opened, I got a few papers and I looked at them. I saw this one. Where this is school in Summerhead, County Meath. Principal teacher. Now, at that time I wasn't actually qualified to be principal and teacher. I had two more years to go. But it didn't make a great deal of difference at the time. You could, you'd get appointed and you wouldn't make any bones about it. As long as you were um, a qualified teacher, trained. Mm. See, at that time, there were not many teachers trained. Uh, and, uh, oh, I got the job straight away. I no sooner <laughs> I answered the advertisement in the paper, and I had a reply from Father Boer in a few days. Because he was the tight one. He always wanted everything to be fixed up. 
didn't like Anthony Kane, you know. He was, was known to be a little impatient. Yeah, impatient. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry, you uh, where did you do your training? Oh, Pats. In St. Pats, yeah. right. There was no degree in that time now. It was only a diploma in teaching. Yeah, many, many. You know, Catherine and all those. In the last 25 years, anyhow. They have a degree in teaching. Yeah. There was no degree in our time. We were called NTs, National Teachers. Yes. <laughs> mm. It was a famous old name. Sure. And our uh, famous acronym, or whatever you call it. Mm. So, what, what was your, your actual home address in Mayo? Oh, in Mayo, I was Strayed. Strayed? Strayed, yeah. Strayed. Uh, Michael Gabbard Park, isn't it? Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And sorry, you had siblings? You had other uh, brothers and sisters? Oh, they were all over the world. You had a number, though, had oh, you? Oh, quite a number. We were a big family, we were all scattered. They're all there now, we're not a mercy of them except one. And how many were there? Uh, there were twelve of us. Twelve, right. That was a very good family, which was the... Now, that was left the left home left family right, yes. originally was our nine of us. Oh, really? Uh, mm. And then we sc all scattered in 19... what year was it? 39. Okay. My mother died that year and all not scattered. And were you f farming or what was your... I went to live then with my aunt. Right. And <coughs> she had a little shop in Strayed. And my uncle was a... a what a guy was. My uncle was a... What Andy Gunner used to be, an insurance agent. Uh-huh. In those days. He had a little farm and I used to help him a bit. I knew, stay with me. The two of us, the two young officers, ended up with Uncle Man. All the rest were grown up enough to disperse. They went on over the world afterwards. Right. Have you ever had a reunion or anything like that? No, 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 no. No, nothing like that, no. But kept in touch with most of them. Is it Bridie the one that's left? No, Bridie is the only girl, the only woman that's left now. She, she must be near 90 now. She must be 90. I'm 85. And she's four or five years older than I. She's in Australia. Right. She did nursing and she married and went to Australia. She had a few children there. Have you any? Famous childhood stories, anything that's mm. either, either of you? No, and I wouldn't know. I don't know about you. Plenty <laughs> no. of stories, mm. and yeah. I couldn't tell you. Ah, oh, I'm sure you could. There <laughs> <laughs> uh, are times now, of course. I remember when I was going up, times were quite hard. Santa Claus mightn't have featured that much no, in, in, in those no. days. No, Santa Claus was well, not a thing. No, when I was a few years in, in Mayo, <coughs> when all the family scattered from the young ones, <coughs> I got a, an Irish scholarship to Canoche uh, in Saltaine, Galway, right. and which was a preparatory place for teachers right. to the government policy at the time to have a certain number of teachers prepared through Irish. So that's how I became a teacher eventually. And uh, we spent four years in Sauntain. And then on to the training college in Dublin. Right. And, and to, how long was the, your stay in St. Pat's? Two years. Two years. It was so a two year, mm. two year program that time. Mm. All you got was a diploma now. You didn't get a you, yes. didn't, you didn't get a degree as such. No well you became do, what they called what I said there a moment ago, a national teacher in yeah. NT which yeah. was recognised to be quite 
quite fairly good, you know, in, in the scheme of things at the time, so, in the social calendar or whatever you call it. When you were in Dublin then, where did you stay? Or? I, I was in Dublin for a year or so. I stayed in Black Rock. I remember I had a job out in Black Rock for a year. You were able to keep yourself, were you? Well, just barely. Mm -hmm. I was starting when it was very poor that time. It was exceptionally bad teachers starting pay in those early days. Now it's the very opposite. We have a great start. But um, I remember when the first year I was working, I had uh, holes in my shoes and I couldn't afford to get them. The soles of my shoes. I couldn't afford to get them fixed. So, oh, gee, that gold was very. And you know, you wouldn't like to be looking for money off your, off your uh, relatives or anything. That said, now my aunt and my sister, I had an older sister staying with me during the years I was in the IRA. She was partly, um, partly handicapped, but she was a marvellous woman. Nancy was a oh, marvellous woman. It's amazing how sometimes handicapped people are very bright. They're marvellous people. The work they do in there. Now she was quite a bit from the handicapped man. Yeah, uh, but she, what she did for me, you know, she was great there. Mm. And when you went to college then, you you weren't able to work at the same time, were you? Oh no, we, we spent the two years there. So you, you had support from your, your relatives? Oh yeah, yeah. fair play. Yeah. I got the few bob. Now, we came from Cronosting in Galway into the training college and that we had sort of a free pass into it, if you put it that way. Mm. We, we weren't charged. All oh, right. We had to pay our... Um, we had to pay for our, um, any recreation money or anything like that. But we had no charge at all. We had no fee. As a result of the scholarship you yeah. won? Yeah. We had no fees. That was part of the early scholarship of the Great, great. Richard go on to the training college and it'd still be free. Right. Mm. So it worked out fairly well. When did you get I, interested in sport? Well I was always interested in sport, I don't know why. Because I don't think a family were really interested. And I was always interested. I wanted to make football. And I played football for me old miners in 1947. Right. The year that. It was the only year that Crow Park didn't have the All Ireland. Oh, it was in, in New York. Was that it? was the year in New York. Mm. And mm. We, we were left at home in Crow Park that year, I remember. I played at Crow Park. We were beaten by Tyrone. The yeah. same crowd, they're still there. <laughs> and then they became. Yeah. And, and did you progress then in, in sport? Oh, I. Um, my football days nearly came to an end. I got up. Yes, a disc throw. Really? Oh, I was crippled for two years. I was crippled for two years. And uh, I remember when I was in training college, I was going around with a huge casket on my body. It was the, the only known cure at that time, according to Dr. Chance, the man that took me in. Um, he put a big casket around me and I said, keep that on you now for five or six months and you, you get rid of some of the pain. Oh, it did work great. 
<laughs> you did. I got rid of the pain, but I was left very weak in the back. And even up until six years ago, and even today now, if I am too long sitting here, you'll feel it in a, a certain spot. Yeah. Um, six years ago, I had an operation again. A marvelous job he made of me with Dr. Pigeon. Uh, when, my, when my daughter was had a, a bad back at the time, and she got me uh, into uh, Dr. Pigeon's uh, place up in. What's the name of that? Oh, what do you call that hospital up there beside? The, not too far from. The graveyard from in Class Eleven, is it? Class Eleven. What do you call that hospital? They are famous. No. Do you matter? No. Do you know what I'm it's a uh, Bow Bowman. Yes. Not Bowman. No. Uh, heart. It's the heart. Yeah. No. Sorry. <laughs> it, the, it's two and not bones, aren't they? But anyway, you spent some time there, did you? I got me back done. That's about seven years ago now. Oh, I right. never looked back again. Right. I it, I remember originally when I got it done, got the NASA me for years and years the casket thing. And when I took that off, now fair enough, I walked fairly well. But it did spoil my sporting life. You know, but I could never bend me back. But actually. you did play for Summerhill, you did. Oh, no, I played, did play played a little bit for Summerhill. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Mm. What was his in those days? What do you call it? The Bon Secure, isn't it? Is it? Okay. Right. No, it's not. Glass no. Neff, that's the whole. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Pigeon. Oh, I couldn't believe what Mr. Pigeon. I. Uh, about Ten years ago, it started me back, started to come back at me in a big way, and I was crippled in for a few years. And Helen, poor old Helen, my daughter, she 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 did not have been help at the time, uh, and her back, her back is still poor, but. This doctor of painting says, oh, I'm operating. And of course, I was told everybody said, don't, don't, let them go near you with a knife. All these operations on backs are botched. They never work out. Everyone kept telling me that. And I said, I said, oh. I couldn't stick it any longer. I was crippled there. That would be seven or eight years ago. <clears throat> I was talking to the doctor on Tuesday evening. On Monday evening, I forget. <laughs> I was a marvellous man. Mm. And Dr. Pigeons. Um, he says, I'm oh, sure I'm not parading. I'm you. Wait, you see, he says, we'll get this thing right. Um, I had all, all gone around getting scams done and this, that and the other, and photographs of me back, and there they were. One of them was completely shattered, gone to bits, and so you couldn't walk with it. Oh, he says, I look after that. And he was a man of his word. It was only three days after the operation when I could get out of bed. And I could nearly jump to the roof. Brilliant. He was a brilliant. And the pain was gone. Brilliant surgeon. Pain was gone. Yeah. No matter what they say sometimes about consultants, they are a bit, you know, and a little bit uh, to 
Tom the money maybe or whatever you call it. But by God some of them can know their job. Sure. He sure me knew because I couldn't believe that a person could get such relief from pure pain. And you never suffered from your oh, I'm afraid I did. I'm afraid I did. Yeah, I didn't have an operation, but uh, I was. It it didn't go to where it required an operation. But yeah, once once you suffer, you you will for life. Could it could it take you to your um, your courting days if you want to tell us anything about it? I mean, you met and were married in the same oh, year. Oh, in the same year. Met in January. Right. Oh, we were married in October. Wow. Foolish. He didn't hang about, did he? That's how much I should have got. <laughs> <laughs> However, we're still here. Oh, yeah, certainly are. That's After nice. 60 years. Mm. Well, doesn't yeah. make any difference. And uh, the social scene the, generally at that time? Oh, well, your bikes. <laughs> isn't it all? Oh. When we got married. Oh, where did, you, where did you meet? How did you come where to? Where did we? Well, we met his dad somewhere, down in... Uh, in Trim, was it? Trim, yeah. And you're back in Trim. <laughs> I, I was going to burn down that town hall after all. <laughs> um, uh, Trim, and then we got married, and she, we were only two months married. She, her father had a house. In Rat Coal. In Rat Coal. And we went to live in it. In sure. <laughs> we were. It was out completely out of the way. You couldn't live in it. So we said we'd get out of it. And the first place we got out of it was down in McCormick's. In the big house? In the big house. On Mahan House. I got, um, I got, um, oh, that's a place. Where, oh no, did we, we? First, I think we were we in Clonmahan before we were in the Duke Walk. I so. so. We spent a few months in the Duke Walk. Right. And was it was it living with a family or did you have a house? In the Duke Walk, uh, <coughs> the house was belonged to uh, no Ennis, Christy Ennis, the Lord of Oh, Ben, Christy Ennis, you, you might have known them. They're up there uh, on the way to uh, our to our. Okay, yeah. Oh, uh, Lord, a lovely person. He was for old Christy. And shall we? He got that house first. But then his brother was getting married. Willie in it, who was a postman there later on. And we had to leave it. Okay. Yeah. And that was when I think we got into, yeah. That's when we got into. Plan Man. Plan Man. Big house. Right. And who, uh, who was that? Uh, the trainer, the horse trainer, uh, what do you call him? McCormick. Richard. Oh, no, sorry, the actual owner, Richard McCormick. Richard, yeah. Right. Who had a name of being another awkward customer. <laughs> and I found him to be one of the nice poor old busy about. He met us into the old house when we had nowhere to go. And of course, <coughs> we were trying to get out of it because we, you know, it was to nap it. Mick Fine and. Yes, Mick Fine and yes. Yeah, mm. Mick Fine. Mick was living there at the time, he was living in part of it, and we were living in the other part. But it was rough and ready now. There was no fireplace. And was Richard living there himself? No. He was? No, uh, the father wasn't. No, he was living in the car at the time. Oh. And <clears throat> he knitted to us for a few bob. Oh, very little. And a decent man he was, because he never asked if I were in it. 
I found the, the most decent people. How long were you there? We were about six months in it. And what do you call them? The old house down the morning. You know yes. that old one? Of course. Willie Ryan. Became uh, vacant. Willie Ryan's his place. And we said, we better go over there now because probably this man here will be coming to live here or something, you know. Yeah. Not that. And he didn't want us to go and he was right. I was awfully sorry after what that I ever left. Grandma. Who was in Ryan's house before you? Um, Mrs. Bird. Mrs. Bird. Uh, yeah, Bird. The mm. family, was it? Do you remember Bird? Yeah. Uh, they live off there near Rappenine too, I think, one of them. Some of the words. I think so, I mean. But it was a Mrs. Bird and she, they were leaving, they were getting a place of their own. And foolishly, what was only afterwards that I realised, because when I got into the old house, it was comfortable, it, and it was cheap, it was everything, and it made me lazy, and I never thought of, you know, it was a, it was a backward house, there was no water or soil. No water, no toilets or anything, you know, we had to go up to the, up to the and pump we there for, for water. 31 years. Where are you really? And we were in it, because I never, and all we ever did was go to race and enjoyed myself. I never thought about a house. I was almost stuck then. <laughs> in 1980, I know Jesus said that I never left it too late and finished. And luckily enough, the houses were very cheap at the time. <laughs> and this little place here came on the market. And I just had a few... 1981. Mm. Right. And just had about enough to... We scraped up enough to get a deposit on and got in here. Going, going back to cool school, there there must have been a, a, some exceptional incidences and oh. things that you remember. Well, the only exception incident, incident in cool was that it was always a place where you could do what you liked nearly, which was unusual at the time. I found all my inspectors and all. You see, on account of Father, Father Moore in the early stages, we got sort of immune to inspectors or to anybody. Go on. They're too much afraid of them. <laughs> they not go near <laughs> And I remember we were off for ten years without it. <sighs> Without an inspection of anything, and Mrs. Giles. But she was a very, all oh, very nice woman, Mrs. Mrs. Giles. Giles. She was uh, the wife of the local TD, Captain Giles. Sure. Uh, and he was a, he was a gentleman too. So, <clears throat> but the old house was the ruination. We just kept going and kept enjoying ourselves. Mm -hmm. Never, never, never saving a bob. I was at the race every weekend. She'd go somewhere. No, we'd, we'd always spend every penny we had. There's not much wrong with that, is there? So we ended up in a. I was, I was nearly, born out or nearly. Desperate. And then the house has got an awful drop in the 1980s. And this little place here was on the market for almost nothing. And look enough, we had a few bought to scrape. Nineteen and a half thousand. Yeah, we... Really? Hmm. We got it. Hmm. In 1981. Yes. In 1980. Yeah. So they're, they're gone very low. So luckily enough, we got in here. 
Then, of course, we had the two extra kids at this time. Yeah. Jack and Jim well, we were a ten year gap, you know. Jack and Jim we were Jack right, and Jim. And after ten years, Catherine arrived. And then, and then Helen. Helen in three more years after that. Mm. And I'm not having any more. <laughs> I'll never forget the day that we brought home Catherine. And all the kids of the village. You weren't amongst them, were you? I don't recall. No. Every one of them. We were in the yard. We we were in the yard when we came To home. see the new baby. To see the new. Mm. I couldn't believe it. Lovely. And it's that's one day I never forget. No. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, there you Pat riding. Yeah. All the Danies. Everyone. I think we all lined up. And I think it was the I remember that. Group. All those people, young people. And Lord of the Dick. And you know what Dick was like. And he still is. He never changed a day. He's still the same day. Whoop, whoop, he's still roar. And <laughs> but I can never forget how they all and you'd want to see the face at some point when we arrived. What, what year was that, Kathleen? Uh, nine, uh, 1981. She was uh, what age was Dick at the time? And she was about 12 or 13. 10. Was it? Mm, ten. After ten years. Mm. So, so it was around about 1981 or two? Yeah, it mm. was good right now before we came in here. Oh, before we came in here. So but, uh, yeah. We, we yeah. had them out there but, for a good few years. But Summerhill was, was a very small little village at that time. So you would have known all the neighbours and they would have oh, known yes, you. Yes. So it would be, it'd be normal for them to, to turn be, up to I see the baby. I could be a bucket of water on top of the road and nobody would ever touch. Ah. You know what I mean. Mm. You can leave it in the middle of the road and they divide it and say, oh, these, that's McDonald's, book of the water. It was that kind of life. Yeah, of course. Which was marvellous in its mm. own way. Um, you had Jim Shaw, <coughs> and Street Shaw. You had neighbours of the finest people. Sean Mahon. Sean Mahon, yeah, well, not him now. His father, cranky young man. Uh, <laughs> we had uh, the shopkeeper, uh, Willie Lynch. Willie Lynch. We had your auntie, uh, Gus. We had people of the highest caliber. You know what I mean? Uh, people of pure character. Like, uh, if, you, if, you, if I go back now and look at all those people, they were very high class people. Like, <coughs> now Shaw's was in old pub, but uh, she was in charge at the time. Trixie. And she was, well she wasn't, if anybody even thought of getting drunk on the premises. Oof. You just had your few pints and you behaved yourself. Yeah. You know. Oh, real pure high class people. Any of the Shaws were well known, I often heard that said that old Mrs. Shaw was a marvellous woman. I often heard that said that she, uh, she was a, a real charitable, kind woman. And poor old Jim was alive at the time. You know? Jim was always a bit of a playboy. But at the same time, he was, he was awfully enjoyable. He used to come down to the old house. Yeah. We used to love him coming down to the old house to have a chat nearly every evening of the week. Can you recall, at that, we say, in 53 or 4 or that period, as you work your way around the village, can you recall the, the people who lived there at that time? One, twelve. If, if you, you had fields, you had butterfields. Well, well, that's the author. No, well, let's go in... in, um, in uh, from left to right. 
we had on the left side there, you know, as you went to Sabahin from this side here, you had Fields' garage, Fields' house. Was that the first, um, was say after, after the laneway where you lived? After the laneway. Oh, yes, there was a, <coughs> a row of council houses. There was no, before that, before that, when we arrived first, there was a family there living... Uh, was it Talon? Talon. Jack Talon, as you liked. I remember Jack Talon. And Clark's. So there were two two separate houses. Or, uh, what, am I right there? I think there were two separate houses. Okay. Talon, and and then... And, and, and you go on up then. Uh, the pub was next, shows there was no intermediary houses at that time. Now this is when we first arrived, uh, and the pub, onto Fields's, onto Meanra Higgins. Yeah. Uh, who was next? Bruton, was it? Mm, no, there, you still have the... Burns. No, but there were, there were three large houses there after Fields. Yeah, when so they Higgins had the, was the uh, first. Higgins and but there were there was the, the one in those houses would be always rented out, I know. Well, the, the middle house, I, I, I just, just don't know about that period, but Master Gogarty would have been in the third house, the third, at that time. Mm. An uncle of, of Phyllis Gogarty. Well, no, I'm trying to, yeah. But at that time, I, I, I'd forgotten who would be in that middle house. Gogarty? Well, H Higgins. Well, Higgins, were they not in the first house? So there was a middle house. I never made it. I thought there was nobody in some of them. There was one in the house that always made me rent it. Okay. Because I remember one two different people who were... There was a Dr. Corby there at one stage. Yeah, yeah but before before your time, okay. Yeah. He wasn't there now. Right. And then, and then it would have been Barnes, as you say, and, and Barnes. Barnes and Bruton's. They were John Jack Bruton. Yeah, they were together, and then you had Kelly's. Kelly's. But do you remember the small little um, the dispensary? Um, I think did Niall Fagan live in it around about that time? Uh, a, a small Christy Williams then owned it in, in, in latter times just after the, the three big houses before you come to Barnes I know where it is before you go up the back lane yeah I know what you're talking about I think they called it the dispensary I can't remember that no no that's um, Fagan was in it now, I can't, I can't really remember. And then moving on after Bruton's. Then you had um, Kelly's. Before that, I think you had the Miss Christie's, wasn't oh, it? Oh, the Miss Christie's. Yeah. Mm. Yes. I don't remember that. Do, do you recall, you wouldn't recall the barracks being the, the old, I, I've forgotten when the old RAC bar barracks was destroyed. No. no. Do, do, do you happen to remember the new Garda barracks being built? Oh, no, no. You don't? No, we... It was when they I think, when we arrived. It was when they were not there. Um, <coughs> no, they had the Miss Christie's and... Well, there's a grand. That's right. Remember, Mick Grand. Well, of the two houses, one was that I spoke about earlier, the two small houses before you get to the back lane, yeah. do you know the back yeah. lane? Yeah. I think Grahams owned one of those what houses. Mm. And but I think he also then later on lodged with, with uh, Miss Christie's. I think so. Okay. Because there was a story that uh, Father Moore was wasn't too happy with them living with the Miss Christie's. Right. And he says when you 